Imagine that your management asks you to deploy a monitoring app on every node inside the production cluster. So, which Kubernetes controller do you use? Hello and welcome to the DMN set. My name is Srinath Challa. I'm a certified Kubernetes administrator. So in next few minutes, I'll try my best to explain what is DMN set and what are its use cases and how it differs from other controllers such as replica set and more. But before you watch this video, it is good to have a basic understanding of what is replica set, pods and Kubernetes. In case if you need a help with that, please do check the links in the description below. So without any further delay, let's take a look at the things you'll be learning as part of this video. This presentation is divided into two sections. In first section, we'll discuss the concept around daemon set. First, we'll discuss about one controller that comes closer to the daemon set. Then we'll discuss about what is daemon set and how is it differ from others. After that, we'll go a bit in depth into discussion around daemon set. So that's about the part one. And now coming to the part two, we will review the demo we are about to perform live on Kubernetes cluster in advance. So this will help you better understand when you watch actually doing it live on Kubernetes cluster. So in this review demo, I'll show you what goes inside daemon set manifest file. Then we'll create the daemon set. After that, we'll display and validate the objects it has created. Next, we'll test the daemon set deployment by making sure it is working as it should be. And finally, we'll clean up what we have created. In case if you are looking for actual daemon set demo performing above steps on live Kubernetes cluster, then you can refer to the link in the description below. And now let's get started with discussing about one controller that comes close to daemon set. So to better understand about daemon set, first let's revisit what is replica set that we discussed in earlier module. Replica set ensures that a specified number of pod replicas are running at any time based on the configuration that we define in the spec file. In the example, we see there are two pods run deployed on same node. Now let's do another deployment. Again, we have two pods deployed on same node. So the point here is, once we submit the replica set to the API server, it's up to the scheduler how these pods are scheduled inside the Kubernetes cluster. Let's assume that we have a requirement to deploy monitoring app on every node inside the cluster. And we can't have two monitoring app running instances running on same node. So how do we solve this problem by having only one monitoring app instances deployed on every node inside the cluster? Daemon set. So what does a daemon set does? It basically ensures that all or some nodes inside the cluster runs a copy of a pod. And let's see how that is done in this animation here. We have a same diagram which consists of four worker nodes inside the Kubernetes cluster. So our requirement here is same, which is deploying one monitoring app instance per node on these four nodes. Demon set is the right controller to do this job. It will deploy one pod per node. As you can see, once we submit the daemon set manifest file to the API server, then we have only one pod is scheduled on each node. Daemon set is also used for deploying one pod per subset of nodes. There, first you need to tag the nodes with labels and use those labels inside daemon set manifest file. Next, nodes are always added and removed from the cluster. Let's imagine that a node added to the cluster. Then daemon set controller on the master node monitors that node has added to the cluster, then deploys the pod on newly created node. And when node is deleted, pod is also gets deleted and garbage collected. So finally, to delete the daemon set pods from every node where it got deployed, all we need to do is just delete the daemon set that is responsible for. That's all. For all the pod gets deleted and disappear. And that's about the must know things about daemon set. Now 
Let's take a look at some of the use cases of daemon set in next slide. Before we jump into the use cases, let's recap what we discussed in the previous slide about daemon set. As we discussed, daemon set ensures that all or some of the worker nodes inside the cluster runs a copy of pod. And there will be scenarios where nodes join the cluster and leaves the cluster. So when node is joined to the cluster, daemon set controller will make sure to deploy the pod onto the newly added node. Similarly, when the nodes are removed from the cluster, it will make sure it deletes the pod from that node and it gets garbage collected. There will be a situation where you want to remove app which was deployed as a part of daemon set. You should not remove app by manually deleting the pods because it will get recreated by daemon set. So to clean up these pods, all we need to do is delete the daemon set itself on the master node. Then it will automatically delete the pods it created. And here are the, some of the use cases of daemon set, such as deploying applications like collect D, fluent D, and Ceph. And now it's time to move on to the next section, which is review demo. In next few slides, we'll review the demo we are able to perform on live Kubernetes cluster in advance. First, we'll see what goes into the daemon set manifest file. Then we'll deploy the Fluent D, which is a log collection application using daemon set. After that, we'll display and validate the daemon set to make sure it is created as per our expectation. And finally, we'll clean up the things we have created in this demo. And now let's start with writing the manifest file for daemon set. Like any other Kubernetes object config file, daemon set spec file contains four top sections, API version, kind, metadata, and spec. First, API version. API version of daemon set is apps v1. Then next, kind. Kind of the object we are creating here is daemon set. So we have it here. Then follows the metadata. Two things that goes under metadata are name and labels. Name of the daemon set in this example is Fluent DDS. Then labels. Labels are optional. We can define the labels for this daemon set if needed here. But for now, we'll skip it. Finally, we have a spec section. This spec section contains the pod template and selected to select the pods that comes under its control. In this pod template, we will define the FluentD containers and labels we have given it here is FluentD. And we will define the exact labels under the selected section down below. Actually, that's it. Now, let's create this one. First, let's display the number of nodes inside the cluster by running kubectl get nodes command. As you can see, there are three nodes. One is master and two are worker nodes. Now, let's go ahead and deploy the daemon set controller that we created previously. From the output, it is confirmed that it is created successfully. Next, let's validate above daemon set deployment by displaying the pods which are created as part of this deployment and also on which nodes they are running on. As you can see, there are two pods running which is on node 1 and node 2. Main important thing here is it is running only one pod per node. Next, let's go ahead and display the daemon set. From the output, it is confirmed that there are two pods currently running. Now, let's take a look at the complete details of a above daemon set using kubectl describe command in next slide. kubectl describe command followed by the object type, which is daemon set and name of the object, which is fluent DDS will print all the details about this specific object. Here, you can see how many nodes pods are scheduled and what is the desired number. Also, you can see the pod status and list of the events. It comes very helpful in case of troubleshooting. So that's about the kubectl describe daemon set command. So to recap everything, we have created daemon set, then we displayed and described the daemon set object we have created and finally, we have validated the daemon set. These are some of the must-know operations of daemon set in Kubernetes. And now, 
it's time to clean up the objects that we have created. So we'll discuss about that in next slide. There is one object we have created in this video and that is daemon set. So we created the daemon set, then daemon set has created the pod based on the pod spec that we mentioned in the manifest file. Pods are the actual workhorses which will complete the task. So let's delete the daemon set we have created. And command to delete the daemon set is kubectl delete daemon set followed by the daemon set name which is fluentdds in this case. So after you run this command, you should see the daemon set has been deleted successfully. Point to note here is, if you delete the daemon set, as a result, daemon set will make sure it deletes the pod it created. Instead, if you delete the pods manually without deleting a daemon set, then daemon set controller will make sure these pods are created again. So as I mentioned earlier, make sure to delete the daemon set, not the pods it has created. Again, let's check the status of pods using kubectl get pods command to make sure there are no pods related to fluent DDS daemon set. You can do that by running kubectl get pods. That output confirms that there are no pods running at this point of time. And now, before we move on to the next video, Let's recap everything that we discussed so far in this video as part of summary next slide. So coming to the part one, we discussed the concept around daemon set in general. So as we discussed, daemon set ensures that all or some of the worker nodes inside the Kubernetes cluster runs a copy of pod. That's exactly only one copy of that pod. And there will be scenarios where nodes joins a cluster and leaves the cluster. So when node is joined to the Kubernetes cluster, daemon set controller will make sure to deploy pod onto the newly added node. Similarly, when nodes are removed from the cluster, it will make sure to delete those pods from that node and it's get garbage collected. After that, to remove app which was deployed as a part of daemon set, we need to delete the respective daemon set. Finally, we saw a couple of use cases of daemon set, such as deploying node monitoring, log collection, and storage daemon. And that's about the part one. And coming to the part two, I showed you what goes inside the daemon set manifest file. Then we deployed the fluent DDS daemon set manifest file we have created above. Once the application is deployed, then we displayed and validated the objects that has created. Finally, we cleaned up everything what we have created in this demo. And now it's time to move on to the next video and that is Demon Set Demo Video. In that demo, we'll perform the exact steps that we discussed in this review demo section. Link to that video is provided in the description below. And finally, thank you so much for watching this and hope to see you in the next video.